What's up guys, Pastor Rob here, back with another reaction video. As usual, I've got my son Gage. What's up? And as usual, we're going to be reacting to a song requested by you guys in the comment section of our videos. Keep in mind, this is not an endorsement of the song, the artist, or the genre as a whole, but an attempt to create discussion and encourage discernment while listening to music. To learn more about us, visit PastorRobReacts.com and check out our sponsor, Fallen by Nature Christian Streetwear, at FallenByNature.com. Today's song is a song by actually, he's kind of become a friend of ours, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. The band is called A Secret Ending, and his name is Ed, and he's actually the one who did your lyric video for the song you and Ben did together. Yep, Unworthy. Yeah, make sure y'all check that out, Link. It's a shameless self-promotion. <laughs> and also he did the lyric video for Clock and Veil, uh, the song Clock and Veil by Ref Refiner, another friend of ours. So um, we definitely wanted to check this one out. The song is called Abhor the Assembly. Yeah, Ready? sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in getting to it. I, I know the video is going to be great because of your video. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump right into it. Kind of a symphonic sound. Yeah. What's wow, going on? I like those highs. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like the vocal effect there. Man, visuals. <laughs> Drumming is great. Yeah. I like that design. Man, I like his logos. I need a shirt. Nice. Like a symphonic breakdown. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard nothing like that. Nice. Ah, that cover's crazy. like that. Yeah. Ooh, I like where the vocals are too. Nice. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Cool. Like that little graphic. I like that a lot. He's going. Yeah. Ooh, I like that echo. Yeah. Nice. Oh, the visuals are great. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Scripture. That was very dramatic. 
Yeah. Uh, the symphonic metal, I'm not I'm not so used to that. I think we've done one song, uh, the female-led band. I can't remember who that was. Nightwish. Nightwish, that's it. So it's a similar sound to that, right? Like A lot heavier. Definitely better, a lot heavier. in my opinion, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, this was better. Nightwish, that's pretty cool. It was better than I expected. Yeah. Well, more my taste. I guess I wouldn't say better than Nightwish, but it was better than what I was expecting from yeah. these guys. So this is more your style of music? I guess. I mean, I really enjoyed this song. Yeah. Yeah, the um, it was impressive. The drumming, guitars, mm-hmm. vocals, everything. The video. Yeah, I was surprised by the vocals. I mean, that's uh, I know people that can be off-putting by pe- for people, and I know that's. Uh, Is it off-putting to you? That's a good question. You put me on the spot like that. <laughs> uh, if I'm honest, that nah, or something. If I'm honest, yes. Mm. But I liked it real quick. You know what I mean? So. I got, I'm old, you know, <laughs> I'm from the old school and, you know, I grew up in the era where metal was satanic and just plain and simple satanic, that vocal style was satanic. So those are presuppositions that I carry with me that I'm constantly fighting against because those aren't true. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it has been the whole thing with this channel is always making sure I, I leave that, that those false presuppositions out of my thought process. Does that make sense? Yeah. So occasionally when a song is a certain tone or, or certain heaviness or like these kind of vocals make me, I, I feel that rising up in me and I got to go, no, that's not true. Like the, it, it's okay that it sounds like that. That is a, um, as I've said so many times on here, we're made in the image of God. Our vocal range is part of our creation, is how we were created. So to be able to sing in this manner is just a style. It's just an expression of the way we were created. Yeah, And exactly. it's being used for good. You know, so you could say that that voice is evil, but it's not. It's being used for good because even a beautiful voice can be used for evil. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They can, for sure. You can have the most quote unquote angelic voice and use it to promote evil. Well, yeah. he has a voice that some people would quote unquote call evil, which there's no way to determine if a vocal tone is evil. There are people evil. who would say that is beautiful. Well, I agree. I agree. But I'm saying from a from a uh, mainstream perspective, from a uh, uh, mainline common church you know perspective there's yeah. always fringe and that would be the fringe would say that's beautiful right even though i agree like i understand the technique that goes into that and i understand how hard it is to present a, a good song all elements of the song how hard especially being involved in the creation of your song from a distance i just observed but i saw how much went into that yeah so i get it it's not like he just woke up one day and decided to, you know, worship Satan with his with a vocal tone or some weird thing like that. Yeah. Though there is music that is um, focused on sat- Satan and demonic stuff that sounds like that, but that's just a coincidence. That's not doesn't mean the vocal style is satanic naturally. Yeah. Anyway. Very well put. Yeah. Enough of that. I, I I'm sure we've touched on that before on the channel. Um, lyric wise, so this is what I mean. So like you hear that and you go, Oh, Satan music or something like that. And I understand because it's not somebody's preference, but when you dig into the lyrics, this is some pretty bold Christian, uh, heavy on doctrine and on, um, sola scriptura and like Christ alone and all this stuff is all in the scripture. Uh, very God focused and God honoring, and I think theologically accurate too. So I mean, he, he, I mean, he, he uses theological terminology in here. The song went really fast, and the lyrics went really fast. Hard to keep up with it, but when you're when you're looking at the lyrics, so the title "Abhor the Assembly." Now again, if you're just passing and you're just you know uh, old man Christian guy, and you go "Abhor the Assembly," and it sounds like Satan, it must be Satan music saying, you know, abhor the assembling of the brethren, abhor the church, hate the church, right? Sounds that way. But when you get into it, he starts the lyrics off with, uh, forgotten is the curse of the Adamic covenant. And basically, actually, let me read this. So he starts the song off with the first verse here. Forgotten is the curse of the Adamic covenant, the bride of Christ robed in satanic ornaments. Look, she's embracing the Pelagian heresy. Look, she has lost her entire identity. She cannot bow to the creator of the cosmos when she's deny when she denies the manifestation of the logos or logos, I think he said. 
nor can she be saved by the idol that she follows. Thus her children roll and wallow in their sorrows. That's beautiful poetry if you read it like that, right? Uh, but he, one of the main points of the song is forgetting the purpose of the gospel, the, the, the uh, original sin, this sinning against God and this fallen nature, this total depravity of mankind uh, because of the fall. And forgetting that the gospel is a is a rescue from this circumstance, this human imposed circumstance that we inherit from our father Adam. Mm. Uh, he even says that he says, "Look, she's embracing the Pelagian heresy, and that's what Pelagianism is. It's a denial of original sin." It's so a, explain that language a little bit. When he's talking about the bride of Christ, he's talking about the church. The church, but he's using it metaphorically. He's saying. Uh, the bride of Christ robed in satanic ornaments. So Jesus uses, call, or the Bible calls the church the bride of Christ, right? And he's saying this church is, is robed in satanic ornaments, so it's a metaphor for churches that teach false doctrine under the guise of being a church, like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay. Kind of same concept. Uh, so this, this bride of Christ being used to, um, to teach satanic doctrines, which Pelagianism is considered a heresy and would be a false doctrine. And it's very common today. It's very common what today. What is that? Well, um, it basically taught people that it taught that people were capable of avoiding sin and choosing to live righteous lives even apart from God's grace. Mm. Um, and also that uh, so Pelagius rejected the idea of original sin and predestination. Uh, he believed that people were not inherently sinful and that they were able to live holy lives in accordance with what God's will in accordance with God's will, and merit salvation by good works. There's a key. This from, That's from the Lexan Bible Dictionary. Salvation by good works, no original sin. Okay. Those are the, those are the main... There, there's other things, but th- that's the main things right there. Uh, this, th- I got this from Carm. I thought this was good. So in other words, a person's free will is totally capable of choosing God and or doing good or bad without the aid of divine intervention. Pelagianism teaches that man's nature is basically good. Thus, it denies our original sin, the doctrine that we have inherited a sinful nature from Adam. He said that Adam only hurt himself when he fell, and all of his descendants were not affected by Adam's sin. Pelagius taught that a person is born with the same purity and moral abilities as Adam was when he, w- when he was first made by God. He taught that people can choose God by exercising of their free will and rational thought. God's grace, then, is merely an aid to help individuals come to Him. Mm. So synergistic, God's offered this salvation. He's he's sacrificed His Son uh, for for the potential salvation of people rather than the actual salvation of people. So He died for people that would reject Him, ultimately. Yeah. But He makes a good point, which we'll get to in a moment, about that. It's actually at the end of the song. Um, actually, I have to jump to it because it makes sense now. Where is it? He says, If my faith is without the fall at its center, why on earth would I ever need a Savior? In other words, what, what's the point of a Savior if I don't need saving from anything? Oh, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's and that's a, a, a great way to put it. Well, why, why is there a Savior? Why did Jesus die and suffer if there was no reason for If I can do it on my own. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Pelagianism is from like the 5th century AD, and it was deemed a heresy by multiple church councils, and it went away, you know, and kind of found its way back. Semi-Pelagianism is kind of the thing now. It's kind of right in the middle, except for the Bible teaches that we were born in sin, right? That we were, um, Paul says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins, that we were ch- by nature children of wrath, Um Jesus himself even says the, in John three seventeen through eighteen, at right after the famous three sixteen, he says, "Those who do not believe are condemned already." Mm-hmm. So the natural position of a man is condemnation. There's no one who does good, no, not one. In in Romans, there's so many places in the Scripture that teach us that man's nature is corrupt. They are fallen by nature. Shameless plug, <laughs> buy your shirt, fallenbynature.com. Man's nature is naturally corrupted, and we are unable in and of ourselves to do good unto God spiritually. I'm not saying we can't do good things like help an old lady across the street or something like that. Yeah. 
That's true. But as far as God's concerned, we cannot please God apart from his cleansing uh, by the blood of Christ. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff in here. I think when he's saying he abhors uh, the assembly... In this, in in the uh, in the chorus, he says he preached by the Sea of Galilee a commandment to be friendly, you know, love your neighbor. But with these sinners all around me, it is hard not to abhor the assembly. So he's saying it's it, it's hard not to abhor this assembly, referring back to this bride of Christ robed in satanic ornaments, this this false church, just this false assembly that's teaching heresy. Um, he's actually quoting uh, Psalm 26, 5, which says, I do not sit, I'll, I'll read 26, 4 through 7, I do not sit with the deceitful, nor do I associate with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. So that's what he's referring to as an assembly of evildoers. These evildoers who are robing the bride of Christ in satanic ornaments of false teaching like Pelagianism uh, and other false teachings, prosperity gospel, uh, a very man-centered gospel where Jesus came you know, to make your life better, that, you know, you're doing okay, but he can make you better. Yeah, uh, the self-help gospel. Yeah, and, and again, a synergistic approach to salvation where... You know, Jesus died, and then all you've got to do is reach out and, 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 and take his hand and kind of meet him in the middle, and then you're saved. Whereas the Bible teaches that we're dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians, and that God brings us back to life, breathes new life into us. Yep. And raises us from the dead. A dead man can't choose God or choose to do good, spiritual dead man. He has to be brought back to life. Um, so I, I find a lot of a lot of good stuff in these lyrics. Um, here's another section. Countless is the brood she is nursing. This false church. Groundless is the doctrine they are learning. And it might not be too late, but it is urgent to prevent a deadly constriction by the serpent and reclaim from it what you have surrendered. So interesting. He's calling. He uses the term "brood." This brood she's nursing, which makes me think immediately of Matthew uh, twenty-three, where Jesus is shouting at the Pharisees, and he says, "You serpents! You brood of vipers! How are you to escape being sentenced to hell?" Mm -hmm. And that's what he says. Countless is the brood she is nursing. These false teachers, these false converts, these these goats, as the Bible would call them, people that are hanging around the flock pretending to be the flock, but they're goats. And he's given a warning here. It's not too late, but it's urgent. Uh, it might not be too late, but it's urgent. To prevent a deadly constriction by the serpent and reclaim from it what you have surrendered. So he's calling the church to repent and, to, and, and take control from Satan and start teaching good doctrine. Um, and be in, in the last verse, unless we are through Christ reborn, shall we remain in evil spawn, of ancient disgusting rites that shunned us out of paradise. And on the day that he returns to save us from the world that burns, will evil hearts be drained from doubt as he arrives to cast them out. Mm. Wow, when he separates the, the, the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares, when, he's, when he says, depart from me, you practicers of lawlessness, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Jesus is going to come and separate out these false uh, teachers, these false converts, these 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 followers of satanic and, and unbiblical doctrines, and he's going to bring together the, the true bride of Christ, uh, the true assembly, the one that he, uh, a secret ending, obviously doesn't abhor, but he wants the church to return to. Yeah. So imagine that, a song that somebody would label as satanic, that, sa that has the sound of what most of mainstream would think is just Satan music, and yet it's it's a it's a very direct call to repentance and a return to true biblical doctrine. So I don't know. For me, a great song. It's it's it's, it's really awesome hearing a song uh, like this in this genre of music. Again, that has that that sound that a lot of people would write off as potentially satanic, right? Except for he's using it as a tool to glorify God. 
to call the church to repentance, to return back to true biblical doctrine and a gospel that is a biblical gospel centered on God, not on man, on Christ, not on our works. Mm. Yeah, I agree. To me, that's fantastic. Fantastic. So, Ed, well done. Good job. I wish I could have said a whole lot more, but I feel I feel like I I, I, I don't know. I feel like I can go on forever, but I feel like I, I feel like I covered what I needed to. Yeah, great song. Yeah. So to learn more about them, we have links down in the description of this video so that you can you know, fi- find his website and Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff and follow them. Uh, I'm sure they have music on Spotify and other places. If not, I'm sure it'll be there soon. And thank you for watching the video. And until the next one, may the light of the Lord continue to shine on you. Peace. Peace.